Well, David Cunn. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, does he consider that the high New Zealand dollar is contributing to rebalancing the New Zealand economy? And if so, how? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, it's uh, arguable, uh, arguable as to whether the New Zealand dollar generally is high. It is high against the uh, US dollar, uh, but not against all currencies. The economy has been rebalancing towards savings and exports as it needs to. As Governor Bollard noted this morning, uh, if a high currency is continued, then rebalancing towards the tradable sector would be more difficult to achieve. While the dollar is highest against those that are countries that are experiencing the weakest growth, the exchange rate with Australia is close to its lowest level in 15 years, and Australia is our largest trading partner, and that represents a major boost for New Zealand manufacturers. Overall, on a trade-weighted basis, the currency is today very close to its average for the past five years and 10 per cent below its recent peak in July 2007. Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, to the Minister, in respect of the comparison with Australia, does he then agree with the Reserve Bank's financial stability report on page 11, which says, and I quote, against the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar has fallen significantly as diverging economic data point to a widening growth gap between the two countries? And if so, does he still maintain that his government is closing that gap and that the markets and the Reserve Bank are therefore all wrong? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, you've only got to look back over recent years to see there is, has been a diverging growth path, and that has been a consequence of two things. One is the huge lift in prices for Australian resource exports, and the other has been the dreadful economic policy that this country pursued for the last 10 years. We are in the process of changing that, and it is going to take some time for the gap to close. Craig Foss. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, what has been the path of the trade-weighted exchange rate in recent years and why? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the so-called high dollar is not just a phenomenon of the last month or two. New Zealand experienced sustained overvaluation between 2003 and 2008. In fact, over this five-year period, the average level of the real exchange rate was the highest since the 1960s. This was driven by irresponsible economic policy of the time, such as rampant government spending, which contributed to the Reserve Bank lifting the overnight cash rate to 8.25 per cent. It's currently 3 it's currently per cent. The consequences were disastrous, particularly for our export sector, which uh, went into a five-year recession. The Minister knows exactly what he's doing. We just had an exchange over this earlier in question time. A question from a colleague asked for the pattern of the trade-weighted index exchange rate over a certain number of years. Uh, the, the Minister then went into a, a whole further uh, exposition over, over whose fault it all was, and that wasn't the, the subject the question asked. And what's more, order, what's more, in my view, it is not appropriate for questions from one's own, own colleagues to be used to be dumped to dump on any other party. The other parties ask plenty of questions and some of them invite being dumped upon but not using questions from one's own colleagues for that purpose. Craig Foster, did you have a well, point of order, the Honourable Bill English? Mr Speaker, I'll just make two points. First of all, the question uh, was what has been the path and why? That's the first point. So I was asked why. Uh, and secondly, if we're going to get into this territory of deciding what can be said, then you as Speaker are going to have to be able to determine uh, between facts and political assertions. Because there are a set of facts in this case about why the exchange rate was high. I don't think the House should be prevented from hearing those facts because, in someone's opinion, they might sound political. Now, order, uh, so you're order, going to have to be pretty order, careful about order, how order, those boundaries are drawn. Now, I'm not sure uh, what level of education one needs to understand the difference between disastrous or, or an emotive term to describe an administration by another government and facts. In my view, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but where one uses, uses an emotive term to describe such as disastrous management or, or, or that kind of thing, 
That is hardly a fact. I mean, it, it certainly is a, a legitimate view that some people might have, but uh, uh, it is not difficult to discern in this House where questions are politically loaded and when they're not. And all I'm asking ministers to do is to show a little more discretion and to, use, and to, to not use uh, colleagues' questions to excessively dump on other parties. I didn't pull the minister up initially. It's just the minister would go on and on about it. And all I'm asking is a little reasonableness in these. Otherwise, the, oppos how, otherwise the opposition will start to get more and more disorderly. The place gets more and more disorderly and the public suffers because they don't actually hear the facts that the minister is referring to. I've got no problem with the minister referring to facts, uh, so long as they're facts uh, from the record. But my concern is where emotive language is used to describe uh, what's gone on previously, because those are not facts. Uh, does Craig Foss have a further supplementary question? Supplementary, question? Mr Speaker, to my colleague, the Minister of Finance. Why is it important to rebalance the economy, and what success has the government had? The Hon. Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the New Zealand economy needs to rebalance because it's run, it has been spending more than it's earned, uh, particularly over the last 10 years, and we now owe the rest of the world we now owe the rest of the world $170 billion. There are some early signs, there are some early signs of success now. New Zealanders are restraining their spending, increasing their savings, and uh, they are paying off debt. At the same time, the export sector has started to get some momentum after five years of recession. Double David Cunliffe. Uh, Mr Speaker, to the Minister, in light of his ongoing concern about the level of the trade-weighted index, does he agree with Dr Bollard, who said at FEC this morning that the dollar is currently overvalued, or the Prime Minister, who said yesterday that he expects the dollar to go above 80 US cents? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, of course, uh, both of them can be right, and that is uh, it can be overvalued now, but still be likely to go higher. And in the light of US policy and the weakness in that, in that um, economy and UK policy and the weaknesses in that economy, there is every probability that it could continue to go higher even though it is overvalued. Honourable David Cunliffe. So, Mr Speaker, if the Minister is arguing that the dollar is both overvalued and could go higher, who then is right? The Prime Minister who says that there is nothing that can be done about the high New Zealand dollar or the Governor of the Reserve Bank who told the FEC today that if currency appreciation continues, he would consider tactical intervention in the foreseeable future if the appropriate tests were met. Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, that, that is the, the uh, proper role of the Reserve Bank uh, and there can be a discussion over... Uh, whether you know, interventions work or don't work. The Reserve Bank Governor has a role. I'm sure he will execute it independently of the government. Uh, the Prime Minister has been responding to calls from people who think that the, fix, the exchange rate can be fixed at a level which suits us, and that is simply not the case. Question. No, I beg your pardon, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Uh, so, Mr Speaker, does he then consider Dr Bollard correct when he said this morning that the, quote, continued rebalancing of economic activities towards the tradable sector is difficult to achieve with a high New Zealand dollar? And if so, what action will his government take to relieve pressure on struggling exporters and savers? The Honourable Bill English. Oh, well, Mr Speaker, the government is taking a whole series of actions that are going to assist with that rebalancing. Uh, it, has got a, it, it needs to deal with domestic cost structures so that our exporters can be, com, can be competitive. Uh, it needs to persist with free trade agreements because, as the experience with China shows, even if the currency is against you, you can increase your trade. And it needs to get the non-tradable sector back under control after many years of reckless growth under that previous government. Question number seven, Shane Arden. 